the world makes a mockery of the word of God. You show the world scripture and the world will say, I don't need it. I don't want it. You look at the world and you say, hey, prayer, it's a powerful weapon. Use it. Go to God in prayer. And the world will say, I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm all right. I don't need the Lord. When I was little, I once heard my dad read from the third chapter of Malachi. And he read from the eighth verse where the Lord, he asked a question to the people. And he, the question that he asked the people was this. He asked, will a man rob God? Now, when I was little and when I heard my dad read that scripture and I heard that question, you know, I thought to myself, you know, it's impossible. My mind was absolutely blown that that question was even asked because I didn't think it was possible for the Lord to be robbed. I didn't think that man had the power to rob God. I mean, God is God. How can, how can God be robbed? But now I'm older. And now that I'm older, I see how day by day, man can rob the Lord. I see day by day that man, we rob God of what should be given to him. And so that leads me in to this question. And my question for today is this. Do you honor the Lord? Are you honoring the Lord our God or are you robbing God of the honor that is due him? Now, honor, that's a word that we often run across in scripture. For example, when we think of the word honor and we think of the Bible, I believe that many of us will think of the Ten Commandments. And I believe that we will think of the commandment that was given to the children of Israel for them to honor their parents. They are to honor their fathers. They were to honor their mothers. This commandment it is so significant that we find this commandment even in New Testament scripture as it is given to those who are of the church age, which is again, all of us, where we are again commanded to honor. We are to honor our fathers. We are to honor our mothers. We are to honor our parents. So what's the big deal about honor? Why is honor such a big deal in scripture? Well, we'll see that honor, it plays a major role within the great commandment in the book of Deuteronomy. When speaking of the great commandment, Moses, he said to Israel that the great commandment is to love the Lord, our God. They were to love the Lord with all their heart and they were to honor. They were to serve only the Lord is what Moses said was the great commandment in new Testament scripture. When Jesus was asked by a lawyer, what was the great commandment? Guess what Jesus said? The great commandment was Jesus said that the great commandment is to love the Lord with your whole heart. And then he said in that love, you are to honor him by loving your neighbor as you love yourself. That old familiar saying that you hear me repeat in almost every last one of my sermons. Again, we are to honor the Lord. So what does honor mean to you? When you hear that word, what does that word mean to you? Typically, when we hear the word honor, we think of respect because that's what we do. We we have a habit of trying to use words interchangeably to where we would say that honor and respect are the same thing. But as you have heard me say about words before, both of these words, they are drastically different. One means one thing and the other means another thing. And see, as we like to say, respect, it is earned. 
rather than given. How is respect earned? Well, respect it is typically earned through one's actions. Respect is typically earned in how one treats you. If they treat you with respect, then you are willing to give to them the same respect in return. If they don't respect you, then we know how you going to treat them, don't we? If they don't respect you, you're not going to respect them back. That's how respect works in, in our society. However, under it, it's, it's different. You see, honor, it should be given, honor, it should be given freely to that which is worthy of praise. And so again, I ask you today, are you honoring the Lord? Now, when I think of honor, I also think of something else as well. You see, I would also tell you that when you honor something or when you honor someone, you do it in remembrance of them. For example, I live day by day doing my very best to honor my mom. I do my very best to honor my dad. I do my very best to honor my grandparents. I can see granddad and grandma face all the time. I, I do my best to honor my uncles, my aunts, even teachers that I enjoyed while I was in school that, that helped me out a great deal. I try to honor them by how I live. I try to, in other words, remember the things that they taught me. I try to remember the, the ways that they raised me. I try to remember the ways that they trained me as I was growing up. I do this because the way that I was raised, I believe was proper. I believe that it was right. I believe that it was good for me. And in doing this, I try not to let myself down. And if I honor them by the way in which I live, I do my best not to let them down. You see, I don't want my dad who is resting in peace today. I don't want him hunting me saying, oh boy, look at what you're doing now. Don't be out there acting like no fool. I didn't raise you to be no fool. I don't want to hear that from him. And then she's still with me. And I certainly don't want to hear that from her. So I live my life trying to honor the way that I was brought up. I live my life trying to make all of them proud. You see, it makes me feel good when mom can smile at the man that I have become, especially the man of faith that I have become. I may not be rich in worldly riches, but I'm certainly rich in God. And so it makes my heart, it makes my soul feel good to know that dad is looking down and he's smiling at the man of faith that I have become because I have remembered the way that I was trained. I have remembered the way that I was brought up. And so again, I ask you today, are you honoring the Lord? Are you living your life to honor the Lord today? Are you living your life to please God? Are you living your life to bring a smile to God's face? Are you living your life to make the Lord happy is what I ask you today. In other words, I'm asking you today, is God worthy of your honor? Now, let's take a look at that thought there, because there are many people that don't believe that God is worthy of their honor. There are many people that live in the world today that live in a manner that does not honor the Lord. But let's take a look at how honor is due to the Lord, our God. Now, in order for us to do this, I brought up the commandment to honor your father and your mother. Let's take a look at that commandment here. Let's consider that commandment that was given to the children of Israel to honor their parents and that commandment that's given to all of us today. Now, the relationship between children and parents, it is like God's relationship with us, isn't it? What I mean by that is that parents, they love their children unconditionally, right? At least they should. Parents should love their children unconditionally. And in this love, a parent, they 
supply their child's every need. At least they should. I see how your eyes are looking at me, D. So I know that some way in your mind, you, you, you have it in your mind saying, yeah, they should be doing that. So I'll keep saying it as well. Parents, they should be supplying their child's every need because they should be loving them unconditionally. You see, in this love, a parent, they supplies their child's every need because a child can't take care of themselves, can they? Parents, they care for their children with the desire for their children to not just grow up. That's going to happen anyway. Parents do it because they want the best for their children. They want their children to, yes, grow, but they want their children to flourish. Now, to me, that sounds a whole lot like what's said in the 29th chapter of Jeremiah and 11 verse, where the Lord says to all of us, his children, that he ain't thinking evil towards us. That's what God said to us. He said, I'm not thinking evil towards you. No, I'm thinking of your future and I have a hope for you in your future. God's thoughts towards us is to give us a future and a hope. His thoughts are towards us. They are of peace. God, as we have seen all of this year, we've made it to the halfway point of this year. In all of this year, we have seen that the Lord desires nothing but good for us. He desires for us to live blessed lives to where we are fruitful to where we again grow, to where we again flourish. That's what the Lord desires for us, and that's what he works towards for us as well. Mm -hmm. See, the Lord, our God, I will tell you today that he loves us unconditionally. God loves you unconditionally. If you don't believe that, just take a look at how the son rose this morning. As it is said in Matthew's gospel by Jesus himself, the Lord, he causes his son to rise. He causes his reign to fall on the good and the evil. Those who are righteous and those who are wicked, the Lord, he blesses. For all of us who are of faith, we know that the Lord, he knows our needs before we even go to him in prayer, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson this morning. We know that when we pray to the Lord, we know that God, he hears us, he listens to us, and he moves on our behalf. And in moving on our behalf, in his unconditional love, we know that the Lord not only meets our every need, he supplies our every need. We know that we don't have to beg, we know that we don't have to plead for anything from the Lord, because God is already blessing us just like that even though we may not recognize it. Even though we worry about things, we know today that we don't have to worry about things. As Jesus said, the Lord, our God, he cares for the flowers in the field. The flowers in the field, they don't have to toil. They don't have to worry about anything. And they are clothed by the Lord. We are more precious than those things. And so therefore, guess what? God cares for you. He loves you a great deal more. And so again, in that unconditional love, we understand today that we don't have to panic, even though we do it. We understand today that we don't have to worry, even though we do it. Because we know that God, he is going to meet and supply our every needs. God is God. The Lord, he loves us unconditionally. And I tell you today that there is absolutely no doubt about that in my heart today. Even in our missteps, guess what God is doing? The Lord, he is still loving us. The Lord, in our missteps, he corrects us. Not only does he correct us, but he shows us mercy. The Lord, he forgives us of our transgressions that we have committed against him. You see in his unconditional love for us, God, he has never forsaken us. God, he has never abandoned us. God, he is our helper. Do you believe that today? 
You see, I stand as a testimony to you today. And I will say to you today that without the Lord, I would not be standing here before you today. I would not be here with you today. And I believe that all of us can say that very same thing. Without God, we would not be possible. So I share all of that with you today because I don't want you to think for one second that God is not worthy of honor. I share all of that with you today because I want you to know and understand today that God is worthy of honor. Do you believe that the Lord is worthy of your honor today? Again, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the 31st chapter and the 12th verse, Moses, he said to the people that they should fear the Lord. And when he said that they should fear the Lord, Moses, he said that they should be honoring the Lord out of that fear. Now, how would they go about doing this? How would they go about honoring the Lord? Moses said to the people that they were to carefully observe all the words of the law, the law being God's instructions. The people, they were to honor the Lord by the substance of their faith and with the first fruits of their produce. In other words, they were to under the Lord by governing their lives according to his every word. They were to govern their lives according to the word of God. Do you hear me here today? And so with that in mind, I ask you again today, do you honor the Lord? By that, I ask you today, are you carefully observing the Lord's word, his every word. Are you being obedient? Are you keeping the word of God? Now to the children of Israel, we'll see the Lord. He shared a message with them in my key verse for today. And we'll see there. Here in the first chapter of the book of Malachi, where the Lord said to them, he said, a son honors his father and a servant his master. Children, again, they should do this, right? They should honor their fathers. They should honor their mothers. They should honor their parents. The Lord, he then said to them there in my key verse, he said, if then I am the father, which the Lord certainly is, He said, where is my honor? He said, if I am a master, which again, he is the sovereign ruler over all of creation, all that is known, all that is unknown. He said, where is my reverence? You see, God, he was looking for something there. And I believe it's plain and clear that the Lord was looking for the honor that was due him. God was looking for his honor and he was essentially asking Israel, what are y'all doing? He was asking them, where is my honor? Where is that? And so in other words, it seems that Israel wasn't giving God honor. You see, I am of the belief that the Lord should not have to ask to be honored by anybody. I am of the belief that God shouldn't have to plead and beg for somebody to honor him. See, God is too good. He is too good to us. For us to think that he ain't worthy of us honoring him. You see, Israel, they should have been honoring him without question. They should have been honoring him without him having to plead for it. You see, all of us today, we should be honoring him without him having to beg for it. We should be honoring the Lord today without him having to plead for it. 
We should be honoring the Lord our God today. But that being said, Israel, they wasn't doing it. They wasn't honoring the Lord as they should have been doing. Of all the people on earth that was living at that time, Israel should have been the main ones that was honoring the Lord. You know, think about that for a moment. We know that God, he certainly loved Israel unconditionally. They were once in the bondage of Egypt. And guess what God did for them? He brought them out of the bondage of Egypt. Then when they got to Mount Sinai, the Lord, he desired to make a promise. He desired to make a covenant with them, which they say, hey, God, yeah, we'll keep it. And so God, he gave them the law by which if they live by the law, they will become like holy priests. They will become a holy nation. But they dishonored the Lord right away by worshiping a calf of gold. But even when they did that, God, he forgave them. He took them to the promised land. And then when they wanted a king, he gave them a king. And when that king failed them, he gave them David. He then gave them Solomon and the people, the kingdom, it prospered. Yet in all of that, Israel, they still manage, as we see here in our scripture today, they still manage to dishonor the Lord. Here in our key verse for today, the Lord had to ask, where is my honor? The Lord had to ask, where is my reverence? I tell you, quite frankly, the fact that God had to ask Israel that, it's just mind blowing to me. It is absolutely wild to me that God had to ask Israel to honor him. As I opened this sermon by saying, God had asked them, will a man rob God? And the answer to that question from Israel was a very loud yes. I tell you today that I answer, will a man rob God? is still a very loud yes from the world. Are you honoring the Lord your God today is what I ask all of you. So one may wonder, well, how does a man rob God? What can we rob the Lord of? Again, I hope it's very clear that we can rob him of his honor. Just take a look here at God's words to Israel in how they dishonored him. To Israel, the Lord, he was saying here in this passage of scripture in the, in the first chapter of Malachi, he was saying to them that they were robbing him of the honor that was due to him. Rather than being obedient to him, rather than being obedient to his promise, rather than being obedient to his instructions, We'll see there that Israel, that they chose disobedience. In the third chapter of Malachi, we'll see that by choosing disobedience and by not keeping the promises that they had made to the Lord, we'll see that they continue to dishonor him. And, and the Lord, he said to them there in the third chapter of Malachi and in the eighth verse, the Lord said to Israel that they had robbed him. They had robbed him in tithes and in offerings. Now, a lot of times when, when those words are brought up, tithes and offerings, you know, we start to think about the collection plate, don't we? You know, many will begin to think that the church, when it comes to tithes and offerings, that the church is starting to plead and beg for money. Yet I tell you today that this passage of scripture has nothing to do with a greedy church. It has absolutely nothing to do with greedy hands. You see, tithes, they, they're used to help those who are in need. That's why they were gathered together. Guess what the Lord has called for Israel to do? Guess what God calls for all of us to do today? We are to help. We are to help those who are in need. God, he expected Israel to give a tenth of the best in their offerings. God, he desired for them to give 
a tenth of their best as a sign of them honoring what he had provided, what he had given to them. Yet while Israel was choosing to dishonor the Lord, we'll see here that again, as the Lord was calling for them to honor him, we'll see that Israel, they had to start, start decided to go about having a Cain type of mindset in the way that they chose to live in a way that they chose to give. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, God, he was simply not a priority in their life. They chose not to put their best foot forward, just like how Cain did in his offering to the Lord. Even worse here is that within the first chapter of Malachi, we'll see that the words of my key verse for today, that it's not necessarily directed to the common people of Israel. We'll see that it is directed to the priest. The priests were those who should have been serving the Lord on behalf of the people. The priests, they were supposed to be the people of faith. But yet we'll see the let the Lord said to them there in my key verse that they had began to despise him. They should have been honoring the Lord, but they began to despise him. They should have known better. They were the ones that knew better, but they were the ones that were blatantly choosing not to follow his instructions. And when they began not to follow his instructions, there was nobody there to correct all of those that were choosing not to follow his instructions as well. Something as simple as keeping the instructions of making offerings that please the Lord was something that the priest was choosing not to do. They were choosing to dishonor God's instructions. The Lord, he tells us there in the seventh and the eighth verse that the priests they were choosing to make profane offerings on his altar. And by doing that, they were choosing to make a mockery of what would have pleased the Lord. In other words, they were choosing to make a mockery of what would have honored the Lord. To make matters worse, the Lord said to the priest there in the 13th verse that they knew exactly what they were doing. The priest that they knew that they were doing wrongly, but they didn't stop. The priest, they continued to do so, and they continued to do so believing that they were entitled to the blessings from the Lord. The priests, they were dishonoring God, but then they would turn around and they would believe that they were entitled for God to bless them. Do you think that you are entitled to God's blessings today? Do you believe that you can go out and that any kind of way and think for a second that you are entitled for God to make easy things for you. You see, there are many people who believe that they can live any kind of way and go to the Lord, pray a prayer of doubt, not a prayer of faith, and believe that things should suddenly be sunshine and rainbows for them. They believe that they should have no troubles. They believe that they should have no struggles even though that they are going out and living a life of sin and in their prayer say, Hey guys, show me a sign. I don't really believe that you could do what you say you could do, but Hey, if you show me a sign, they believe that they are entitled to that blessing from God. I'll tell you today, the world should be honoring the Lord without question. The world should be honoring the Lord without hesitation, but look at our world. Look at the world today. See, when the world was, was living in sin, we know that God gave the world his only begotten son. When you yourself was lost in sin, the Lord, he reached down and said, take my hand. And if you took his hand, he raised you up 
out of sin, and he sat you down on solid ground. As he did with Israel, he has given us his instructions so that we can live by his instructions. As and as we saw for the last two months, we know that his word can make us holy and righteous. We know that his word can cause us, can help us in bearing fruit that is good fruit in this world. Fruit that is holy and righteous. Yes. We know that if we receive his word, we know that if we live by his word, that we will be blessed, that we'll be highly favored. But look at the world. The world makes a mockery of the word of God. You saw the world scripture and the world will say, I don't need it. I don't want it. You look at the world and you say, hey, prayer, it's a powerful weapon. Use it. Go to God in prayer. And the world will say, I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm all right. I don't need the Lord. You see, I believe that the Lord, he still looks out at the world today. And I believe that he still asks the world today, where is my honor? Where is my reverence? In his first letter, Paul, he wrote to you who believe he that is Christ, that is the Lord, he is precious. However, to those that choose to be disobedient, Christ will see Peter, I should have said. Peter said that Christ is the stone that the builders rejected. And that stone, it is now the chief cornerstone. That rejected cornerstone, it has become that chief cornerstone by which all of us who are of faith, it holds us up. We are able to stand on that, that firm and that, that solid foundation. But those who are of disobedience, that stone, it is a stone of stumbling. And they may trip over it. They may fall over it. And without it, they certainly fall over. They crumble. They fall down. As I said, from May throughout all of June, our world today, it is in a spiritual mess. And I tell you today, the reason why it is in a spiritual mess is because the world refuses to give God the honor that is due him. And Jesus, he said it himself that the world hated him because he was not of the world, because he was not of sin. He spoke against, he preached against sin. He spoke against, he preached against the world and the world despised him. Well. So it should come as absolutely no shock to anybody, to any of us that the world still doesn't honor the Lord today. The world despises the Lord. The world, it despises his word. And in that, the world chooses not to honor him. The world chooses to spit in the face of God. You see, we live in a very arrogant world. A world that is filled with pride. A world that truly believes in his soul that the Lord, our God, is not worthy of honor. The truly sad part about this is that honor is a big deal in our world. Just think about this week. Think about what we'll do this week on Tuesday. You see, we, we, we're going to honor freedom, aren't we? We're going to honor justice. Honor is a big deal in our world, especially in this society, this nation that we live in. But the problem with honor is even though it's a big deal, we throw honor around like it ain't nothing. We'll give anything honor except the Lord. Yes, we're going to honor freedom. Yes, we're going to honor justice with, with pump and circumstance and, and good food, barbecue, and with all kinds of fireworks that they already shooting off. But then look at how we use that honor. Look at how we actually honor freedom. Look at how we actually honor the ideals of the justice that, that we are supposed to honor. We throw that honor out the window. 
because we don't honor each other in love, not in sincere love. We don't honor each other in the ideals that's expressed by freedom and justice in our society. When it comes to God, rather than honoring him, we are quick. We are fast to honor and idolize folks who ain't did a thing for us. We are quick to honor and idolize folks who wouldn't know us from the next person. Man, people get around here and I, you know, I just look at it and I'm just blown away at how fast people will worship somebody else than worship the Lord who again causes his son to rise for them. Who continues to make a way out of no way for all of us. And I ain't talking about just those who are sinners. I'm talking about those who are coming to the church and sit down into the pews of the church. We are quick to honor somebody else before we honor the Lord who continues to provide for us day by day our daily bread. The Lord, I tell you today that he is right to ask the question, where is my honor? Because his honor, it is missing in our world. God is certainly worthy of our honor as he is the sovereign ruler over all things. And he still looks down and he cares for us. He loves us unconditionally. Yet like the priest, we dishonor the Lord today. We dishonor him again by not being sincere to him. We dishonor the Lord because where his word should abide in our hearts today, his word, it is actually very far from us. When I say us, I'm talking about the world. I'm talking about mankind, man and a woman, boy and girl. As Israel followed in the way of Cain by not putting their best foot forward, Guess what's still happening in the world today? There are a whole bunch of canes walking around in our world today. There are a whole bunch of canes instead of Abel's. Abel brought his best to the Lord. Are you bringing your best to God today? Are you living your best life for the Lord today? Or are you living a messy life? Are you living any old kind of way? Are you a practitioner of the way of Cain today? You see, the world stands before the Lord and it mocks the idea of putting its best foot forward for the Lord. The world can't give God a tenth of his best. Just a tenth. That's a small bit. That's all that God asked for. And we can't even give him a tenth. We don't move in sincere faith today as we should. We say that we believe, but our faith, is it sincere? Is it real? Is it true? Many of us, we stand before the Lord and we believe that we are entitled. We believe that we're entitled to have all of his blessings while walking around a filthy mess. We walk all over him in complete dishonor rather than honoring him and rather than giving him the reverence that is due him. In his first epistle, John wrote that we should not be as Cain, who again, we know went on to dishonor the Lord. He dishonored his brother by murdering him. John said, don't be that way. You and I, we should move to put our best foot forward. Because again, that is what the Lord, he desires from us. The Lord desires for you to put your best foot forward. God, I want you to understand, ask us where his honor is because the Lord, he desires for us to do just just that. He desires for us to honor him by how we live. He desires for us to remember him. He desires for us to remember his word. He desires for us to be obedient to his instructions. See, the beautiful thing about the Lord is where a parent may have moments of being disappointed in the way that their child acted up. We done all been there, I believe, before. The truth of the matter is that we can't disappoint the Lord. 
we would disappoint ourselves before we disappoint the Lord. You see, we must remember that the Lord, our God, is love. And again, in his love, the Lord has said to us that in our weaknesses, his grace, it is sufficient and his power, it is made perfect in our weaknesses. Amen. When we are out there, when we're falling over in sin, when we're moving in a way that dishonors the Lord, the Lord said, all you have to do is turn back to me. Mm-hmm. In my grace, it is sufficient to lift you up. You see, God, he is very quick to forgive those that genuinely turn to him. Are you turning to the Lord today? Now, does that mean that it is okay for us to have moments of weaknesses where we blatantly go out and dishonor the Lord? Absolutely not. The Lord, he clearly desires for us to again honor him. And so I say to you today, let us move to do so. Now, how do we go about honoring the Lord today? You and I, we honor the Lord by again, remembering him and his word. In the book of Revelation to the church that had left its first love, the Lord called on them to remember. The Lord called on them to remember from where they had fallen. In the second chapter of the book of Revelation and the fifth verse, God called on them to repent. God, he called on them to do the first works or else he would come quickly to remove their lampstands. I tell you today, you don't want your lampstand removed by the Lord. That's not your salvation being taken away, but that's that joy of salvation being removed. You don't want to lose the joy of salvation. Just ask David. See, anyone that arrogantly thinks for one second that they don't need God. I tell you today that you need to think again. And in thinking again, I tell you today that you need to repent. You don't want to lose the joy of your salvation. Do the first works. So what are the first works? The first works, we know it is to love the Lord with our whole heart. And again, in that love, we are to love all of those that are around us. In the third chapter of Proverbs, the ninth and the tenth verse, we are told to honor the Lord with our possessions. We are to honor the Lord with the first fruits of our increase. And when we do this, the proverb says that our barns will be filled with plenty. In other words, when we move to love our neighbors, all of those that are around us, we will be blessed by the Lord and we will be highly favored when we honor the Lord. In his letter to Timothy, Paul stated that those who are rich in this present age, that they should do good and that they should be rich in good works, that they should be ready to give and that they should be willing to share. In his first epistle, Joel wrote that whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? How is that person honoring the Lord when they're being greedy, when they are being selfish? To honor the Lord, we must not harden our hearts in greed. We must not harden our hearts in selfishness. Our hearts must be open wide and they must be open wide in love. When you have the ability to help, you have the ability to honor the Lord. So help. When you have the ability to uplift, I tell you today, honor the Lord by uplifting. That is how we honor the Lord. The children of Israel, they were commanded to honor their fathers and their mothers that their days may be long in the land that was promised to them. But Jesus, he said to us that when we honor the Lord, he said that we will not may, he said that we will have everlasting life in the Lord's kingdom. When you honor the Lord, you will have life. Not life in this world, you have life in the kingdom of God. When you do this, I tell you today, when you honor the Lord, 
you will find great favor from him. So I encourage you today again, honor the Lord today, how you live and tomorrow you will be honored with keys to his heavenly kingdom. Amen. 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 Amen.